gonna say this too to you niggas out there that think this shit is cool, but it ain't cool. Me and this man ain't never been butt naked in no room together with no hoes, pulling no orgy type shit or doing none of that whole ass shit you niggas out there be doing, thinking you doing some fly shit. Nigga, if you're in a room naked with some other niggas and some broad, them niggas looking at your ass. And if that shit is that shit is gay, and you need to get on some other shit. Me and this man got nothing but respect for each other. We ain't never pulling no train. We ain't no motherfucking freaks. We some family men. We getting it paper. Know what I'm talking about? And I had to put that out there, bun, because a lot of niggas doing a lot of fool games and shit out here, man. You know what I'm saying? These niggas, they flip flopping, they pitching in their kitchen with these boys, and they doing all this. And if you gay, that's cool, but be gay and come on out and, and be that. Don't be in front of us and act like a straight up G, and then you get over here and you let these boys bust up your back. But you know, it's going to come to the light. And yeah, I want to put that out there, man. This man ain't never seen me naked. I ain't I'm never seen to. him naked. We don't desire to do no shit like that. We ain't going out like that. And we, I mean, we were wild young teenagers. And when we we before that ex, you know, that ex, yeah. you know, a lot of that shit fucking. Miami, a night of party, and I don't really remember what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Would you like a reminder? Yeah, sure. Play some. Play. Play. Hey, yo, listen, yo, I, I love it all. I love it all, man. I like when you like this, Daddy. Yeah, when you put my bed, Daddy, I like when you, when you scrambling and scraping for no, shit. No, no, no. That was you. Scrambling. <laughs> what? You said, I like when you do it like that, Daddy. When you scrambling and scraping for shit. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> we made a bail appeal uh, to Judge Carter. Uh, it did not go our way. Um, the fight continues. Uh, we're not, we're, we're, we're not, we're not giving up by a long shot. I told Mr. Combs, um, I'm going to try and get his case to trial as quickly as possible. I'm going to try and minimize the amount of time he spends in very, very difficult and I believe inhumane uh, housing conditions and the, and the special housing unit of the Metropolitan Detention Facility. He's ready. He's focused. Uh, he has been ready to defend this case since he first found out about this case. Nothing has changed from his perspective. I obviously would much prefer to fight this case with him out of jail, and we are going to try to bring that about um, through additional legal process. Um, but wherever he is, his resolve is the same. Um, he believes he's innocent. Uh, I believe he's innocent. And we're going to fight this case with all of our might until we don't have to fight any longer. R.I.P. to the legendary Pimp C, one half of the legendary duo, UGK, man. Y'all heard what he was talking about, man. Pimp didn't hold his tongue for nothing. Pause, right? Talking about all this Diddy-ish, man. And we're talking about Pimp C just keeping it thorough and you still got to say pause. No Diddy, man. That's the wild times we're living in these days, man. As Pimp said it, uh, the, the whole blogosphere wasn't around yet you know what i'm saying but the magazines and the hip-hop media world was set on fire by all the ish that pimp was saying about a lot of different individuals mr 17.5 he said that was fugazi among other ish but this stuff he was talking about with diddy man what do y'all think was that directed at diddy you know what i'm saying y'all heard what pimp said he said flip flopping pitching and catching you heard the diddy y'all Diddy audio Charlemagne play where he was talking about. I can't even repeat the first part, man. I just, it feels like you can't put enough pauses and no ditties on top of it. You heard me? But he was saying when you're scrambling and scraping it, pitching and catching, flip flopping, scrambling and scraping, it's just looking all bad for Diddy. And I gotta say, I'm inclined to believe that that was indeed about Diddy, maybe among other individuals as well, but. No question Pimp was referencing Diddy and that. If you ask me, comment and let me know what y'all think about it, man. In that audio that you heard from the Breakfast Club party, Diddy, or his party, played on the Breakfast Club, man. Diddy didn't even know what to say. Charlotte Man was like, yo, that was you. He's like, man, I was in a, in a haze at that time or something like that. You know what I mean? Because let's not forget, man, Diddy been getting high as a motherfucker forever you know what i mean just when this whole ish went down when his crib got raided and they simultaneously hit him at the airport 
that uh, white dude that used to play for Syracuse that rocks with him, that goes everywhere with him, man. Like they got some real strong relationship, if y'all feel what I'm saying. Pause, no Diddy, right? He got knocked with the Chi Chi, get the Yayo. And I think he has some other ish on him, some THC uh, C gummies or something like that. Hell, he might have had some of the Molly water on him. I don't know, but I know he definitely had the blow in, uh, you know, the case. Got pled down for him. He's got to take programs and all that. But that's Diddy's right hand man. Did he stay getting high, man? And listen, that's a fact out here. A lot of these cats that be running around, geeked up and tweaked up, high in that manner, man, be getting on some other ish. Tell me I'm wrong, man. Like real talk, I've seen some real weirdo motherfuckers in my lifetime, and some of them wasn't always like that, man. But they were out here running around partying like it was still the disco era, and they had their mind twisted. You know what I'm saying? Had them flip flopping, scrambling, and scraping, pitching and catching. Pause. No Diddy. But as far as it goes for this case. <clears throat> Diddy going to be fighting this thing from the inside. That's what it sounded like to me. You heard his attorney speaking out. He's going to try to fight this in a speedy manner and these inhumane conditions while Diddy is in custody and all that. Listen to what, um, you know, the feds are talking about why they're shooting all that down. You know what I mean? They try to say, yo, <clears throat> let us put up 50 M's. Let Diddy's house be, uh, you know, secure the bond as well and let them rock a GPS and everyone gives up their passports. And they said, fuck no, there's no amount of money that can ensure, you know, like uh, Diddy to be out on bail because they're saying the witnesses ain't safe. That Diddy has a long history of witness tampering. Y'all see what it says here, right? Sean Diddy Combs will remain in federal custody after his legal team argued for his release on a $50 million bond in court on Wednesday. Judge Andrew L. Carter ruled that Combs would remain in jail due to the risk of witness tampering and obstruction in the case. Uh, Carter said the government proved uh, by clear and convincing evidence that no amount of bail could guarantee Combs wouldn't tamper with witnesses. And that's what they're saying, that he done did this, <clears throat> you know, in, in in civil situations. And I think they're also referencing the case back with Shine. But when it comes to this stuff with female witnesses, they're saying that Diddy would get on that ish like, yo, uh, I got all this freak off footage. I leaked some ish out of there. You know what I mean? You want to be famous like that? Look around. You know what I mean? Like, allegedly, that's what they're saying. Type time Diddy's on. And uh, it's pretty crazy, too, man, uh, as we heard about the J-Lo and Ben Affleck situation, man, is, you know, I kept saying I thought they were going to come with the Rico case as they were looking into the past crimes with the whole shine situation. And, you know, allegedly, uh, you know, it was said that he made J-Lo hold the strap. And um, I guess J-Lo wasn't really trying to give the feds exactly what they wanted. So, uh, you know, they're saying allegedly the feds released that footage to Ben Affleck of uh, some old J-Lo freak off footage. And the second marriage is deaded. You know what I mean? They've been married two times where they get back together and the third time be a charm. I don't know. But people, this is uh, assistant U.S. attorney Emily Johnson uh, told the judge Carter, right, that the hip hop mogul. Uh, Sean Diddy Combs has a long history of intimidating both accusers and witnesses to his alleged abuse. Um, according to a Associated Press, citing text messages from women who claim Combs threatened to leak videos of them engaging in freak offs. So, um, and you know, they in parentheses, actual performances Combs allegedly orchestrated, man. So, it's, uh, it's, it's looking rough for Diddy, man, because at the end of the day, you know, he's going to be fighting this case from inside. They're talking about they're going to appeal all this. But when they're getting into this witness tampering and stuff like that, I mean, this is the feds. But I'm going to point out like Young Thug, you know, fighting a, a, a Rico. And again, this ain't a Rico case. Diddy got this just as a ex trafficking. I should say just in some heinous, horrific allegations. And, um, you know, like. I don't know. I think he gonna end up like Duggan, man, where they ain't gonna let him out on that bail, man. I don't think the feds are budging, right? It says Mr. Combs is gonna be fighting this from inside a jail cell. This is from a, you know, expert legal analyst that's a, a professor in like law, like a law school, right? <clears throat> Mr. Combs is gonna be fighting this 
uh, from inside a jail cell, and it is extremely difficult to assist a client when they are incarcerated. You just don't have the access to them. They don't have the access to you that you have when they are out, man. And uh, I don't know, man, you know, like uh, it's just looking rough for Diddy. Again, they can appeal this decision and they're gonna, I think he goes back to court October 9th, man. But this, uh, I don't know, man, it's early on. Okay, I'm gonna say this. I was one of the ones predicting from off the rip before the feds even raided that we're gonna see Diddy with a fed case. We're seeing it now. We see the way things happen, the domino effect, the video coming out that was held in a cut all that time. You know what I mean? And I said, man, he gonna catch that fat case. And I'm saying right now, I think Diddy's gonna be convicted, man. And peep this, this is also what the feds are talking about. They're saying, listen, open your eyes, okay? Like, yes, in the legal system, it's um, innocent until proven guilty and all that, but check it out. We're, we're showing you, like, peep everything. Go over all the documents, the paperwork, everything. It's all bad for Diddy. He's on some bull-ish even though it's still got to be referenced as alleged, you know what I mean? Because the case is still ongoing. They're saying there ain't no doubt at all that Diddy is on some bullish. Check it out. It says, today, we shatter any false notion of impunity as we uncover the defendant's alleged pattern of manipulation, exploitation, and outright abuse. This is from, or I'm sorry, this is from Homeland Security. Uh, uh, Homeland Security Investigations, New York Special Agent in Charge, William S. Walker. He said, make no mistake, we are here today only because of the unwavering strength of victims and witnesses who have already endured unspeakable hardships. But um, yeah, they're saying, man, don't don't trip. This is just for real. Did he, um, you know, uh, this like it's all out there if you really do the digging, man. And uh, it's early on, man, but I'm going to say my predictions, Diddy's going down. And I don't think he's going to touch down on bail. Similar thing we, we mentioned, Young Thug, Keefe D going through it in his case as well. Like, did he, uh, did he really got his back up against the wall, man, you know? And then, you know, you, we got to wonder throughout this case as, uh, you know, uh, more unravels and, <clears throat> you know, more documents and everything is put out there. Who else is going to be in implicated in all this ish? You know what I mean? There was a lot of conspiracy theories floating around that the feds wanted all this footage, man, to protect certain people. And I don't know, man, you know, um, I'm not so heavy into conspiracies, but a lot of conspiracies ain't just conspiracy theories, right? They, they can be facts as well. You know, do you guys think there's some truth to that? What do you think about the case? Uh, what do you think about Bum B? What do, or I'm sorry, not Bum B, Pimp C. And Bum B was there as well. R.I.P. Pimp C, man. I always say, man, if Pimp was alive and had a podcast today, that ish would be so lit, man. You know, Pimp was just keeping it a thou wow all the time and not giving a fluck how anyone felt about it. You know, he just was unforgivably, or I'm sorry, unapologetically himself. You know, he wasn't, um, he was about to, compromise who he is and what he stands for you feel me so there y'all have it that's the update at this point let's talk about it all in the comments sub up stay tuned for more as coffee talking music news sports current events life and much more and i'm about here y'all peace god bless stay safe spiritual warfare going on out here good versus evil keep your head on a swivel stay blessed stay productive catch you on the next one i'm gone